How does a fat transfer work with breast explant surgery? So this is a phenomenal question in terms of an evolution of fat transfers. Fat has been moved around for over 100 years. Uh, it is the first and obviously the most natural filler because it's from your tissues. And so on many shows, I've explained like chronic inflammation and how your body uh, has tolerance when it's your own tissue. So along the lines of that, how does fat moving from one place to another work? And so fundamentally, I have patients who obviously they got a breast augmentation because they either lacked the tissue from development and wanted more volume or after having uh, children um, going through breastfeeding felt the breast had deflated, it had not recovered, it was maybe sagging, needed to be lifted with or without volume restoration. So those are the common, you know, quote unquote, reasons. The fat transfer has been used in cosmetics to help volumize, even if someone had rippling help with that as well. And then in reconstruction, I used fat transfers for almost 15 years to soften the contours of an implant-based reconstruction or to augment a DIEP free flap breast reconstruction, which is what I did predominantly in my career. So let's break down the elements of a fat transfer. Well, first you have to be able to get the fat. So can someone have a low BMI and still have a fat transfer? So the answer is yes. And can someone have a high BMI and get a fat transfer? Of course, the answer is yes, with a couple of caveats. And so if that's the nature of the ask and the consultation, I will listen to my client and, and, and try to vet, you know, what can I do for them and, and do their exam? And then if that seems like one, they have uh, fat that I could use, and of course we want to use that if we can, then it's about establishing each person's ability to have a fat transfer and, and I'll go into that now. So if it, if you've listened to my shows and or heard me speak on another show, I talk a great deal about genetics. So your genetics allow you to break down and or get rid of your toxins at the cellular level and the macro level. And we eliminate toxins through sweating, pooping, and peeing. But our enzymatic capability, which is passed down from our parents to us genetically, is what allows us to metabolically manage what we get faced with each and every day. So our ability to metabolize vitamin D ultimately helps us with our calcium metabolism. Our ability to uh, methylate helps us with our B vitamin metabolism. Our ability to utilize glutathione to bind up toxins in our liver helps protect us. And then our ability to use antioxidant pathways and antioxidants are like vitamin C, A and E, those are important in terms of taking care of our cellular functions. These are predominantly how we maintain our immune system. So if you take that into consideration, I face with my clients, their challenges with detoxification genetically. Having heard hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients over the years and looked at their genetic reports, I have a very clear understanding from pattern recognition about how they detoxify. And many of my clients have limitations in all of those that I just mentioned. So what's the next step and how do I manage this? So I then will try to assess how much toxicity they face, and that's through a urine toxicity test. So we try to get each patient prepared with supplementation to express those into their urine. And we use our supplements to lower inflammation and to express those toxins, our vitamin D3, K2, our liposomal B complex, our liposomal vitamin C, and then our oral liposomal glutathione. So you're, you're trying to get these things to be expressed in the urine and other supplements like d and glycine. So you're once again, you're trying to get them kicked out so you can visualize them on a, a test result and have a metric to then compare and create their treatment plans. So once this is done and we know their food sensitivities via a blood test and their gut microbiome via a stool test, that builds out a complete picture of this patient's current state of inflammation, how we can lower it, how we can detox them. And then we go through basically a phase one detox using cell core as our detoxification supplement line. So that's 
to help get everybody on a level playing field, if you will, so I can get their fat transfer done simultaneously with their explant surgery. And I can go into you know, why specifically I want to do that. I feel fat transfers should work uniformly across patients. The kind of notion that it's going to go away or it's only works in certain age groups or certain body types or certain weights is is not practical. You know, in addition to looking at all those uh, things I mentioned previously, we want to make sure and evaluate, pay attention to someone's hormone balance so that they have enough of their sex hormones and evaluate their thyroid hormone. We just want to make sure that to the best of our ability, we're helping each and every client get leveled up so that when we do their fat transfer, we get the best possible outcomes each and every time. And, and that's my hack to make it work for you specifically. And that's why so many people come and see me in Austin, both from around the United States and outside the United States now. And recently just had someone give me a call from Australia about this, in fact, a fat transfer. So once again, to summarize, we look at all of these parameters. We look at functional genomics. We look at toxicity testing, gut microbiome, food sensitivities, and hormone balance to set our patients up for success with fat transfer. That's how we get the best outcomes. Oh, and then someone's going to ask me, well, how much fat is needed to transfer? Lo be my clients. I will take four areas typically if those are suitable, inner outer thighs, love handle area, abdomen area. If someone's already had children, we'll combine that with skin tightening at a simultaneous procedure to benefit both the skin and obviously remove the fat. And then we'll, we collect our fat using a Wells Johnson fat transfer system, very specifically for particle of fats, uh, fat particle size, storage of fat, and then reinstitution of the fat under the same amount of pressure. And so it's a very controlled system. And low BMI patients, I can do between 100 to 200 to 250 per side, higher BMI patient or skin stretch from pregnancies. Obviously, you can do more. If somebody's coming in just for a holistic mommy makeover, which is for me, a non-traditional makeover where I don't do a tummy tuck and leave a linear scar. I just harvest fat from all those areas, do skin tightening with body tights of the abdomen and flakes, inner outer thighs, and then transfer fat to the breast to volumize the breast to restore a more youthful appearance with or without a lift. You're just trying to minimize scarring, which is always my goal in you know my treatment plans. And I can go into that about how I do that later for explant patients, but fat transfers work. And you need to take steps to put yourself in the best position. And that's how our plan works.